Good morning. You're welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. It's a very beautiful Monday, the 1st of July 2024. So happy new month to you and welcome to the second half of the year. Now, if you've had certain dreams, certain goals, certain aspirations on the 1st of January, which was the beginning of this year, well, you still have another six months to go and I'm sure you can crush those goals. Anyways, on today's well, breakfast show, we'll be looking at several top trending stories and one of which says big players behind oil theft in Abuja, Lagos. Um, and that's been said by Dixon. Another is Sarab demands CBN governor accounts for missing 100 billion Naira debt notes. And then we'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. The mind is everything. What you think, you become. And that is by Buddha. He was a religious teacher in South Asia between the 5th and 6th century. And he was a founder of Buddhism. And he says this morning, the mind is everything. What you think, you become. So that is just to tell you this morning that there is nothing you're not capable of. As long as your mind can conceive that idea, it is done. So make sure you know that your mind can do wonders. And so can you as a person. Everything that you think in your mind can start to come into full expression of itself. You can start to do things that you never thought you could do before as long as you put your mind to it. But when you start to allow doubt to set in, that is when you start to fail. So if you want to be a successful person, you need to start from your mind. What you think is what you will become it's as simple as that if you're going to stay and say you know what i'm never going to achieve it then maybe you're never going to achieve it because you're not going to do anything about it but when you start to conceive the idea and say i'm going to achieve this you put the necessary actions in place you try to execute it and voila yes you will definitely achieve it so your mind can do anything whatever you think you become and so i think this is a very good quote to start the second half of the year with like i said if you've not you know achieved certain goals that you have made in the beginning of the year make sure that you start to have that paradigm shift in your mind knowing that anything that you think you can become as long as you set your heart on it you set your mind on it it will happen it will come to fruition so this morning which is our mindset monday we're letting you know that your mind is capable of everything and so are you so make sure you are thinking positively and doing the right things for yourself to ensure that you have a successful future all right that's it for our quote of the day moving over to our tom trading story this morning vulnerable poor people should get tax exemption and that is being said by oya daily taiwo oya daily the chairman of the presidential task force on fiscal policy and tax reforms committee advocates for tax exemptions for poor people and the vulnerable suggesting that increasing taxation is unnecessary for revenue generation Oyedele criticized the current tax system, which he described as overly aggressive and burdensome on small traders and low-income earners. He highlighted the plight of individuals selling sachets of water and market traders who face multiple daily levies, which significantly impact their minimal earnings. Oyedele noted that truckers transporting goods, including food, pay excessive fees, which contribute to high inflation rates, particularly in rural areas compared to the urban areas. He believes that Nigeria can increase its revenue without raising taxes by consolidating and harmonizing existing taxes, making the system more efficient and less burdensome on the lower income segment of the society. We daily emphasize the importance of using data, intelligence, and technology to identify and close the tax gap. 
ensuring that those who should be paying taxes do so while legitimately exempting the poor nano and micro businesses. I think this is just a good time to even have this conversation because a lot of things have increased significantly in our country and a lot of these businesses are suffering. In fact, there was a report um, a few weeks ago saying so many eateries have had to close down. There are so many businesses, especially nano businesses, micro and small scale businesses, they've had to close down because they cannot continue with the harsh economic realities in Nigeria. They cannot continue to pay their rent. They cannot continue to afford an alternative source of power. Um, most people don't even have customers because customers do not have that spending power anymore. And so I think having a tax exemption might just even be a good way to cushion the effect for such businesses. Um, increasing taxation, I know the federal government is trying to do that because they're trying to get more revenue. But how about we look at other means of generating revenue? And one of those means is ensuring that we have a sustainable economy for businesses to thrive. Another means is to ensure that we're looking into agriculture, because if we're looking into agriculture, first we can feed ourselves. And so the shortage of food supply will not be here because we have enough food to feed ourselves and then we can start to export it. If you look at it years, you know, in times past, agriculture was one of our ways that we definitely had revenue in this country before the oil boom. Everything that was being done was the cocoa plantation, was, you know, granite being sold, was um, palm oil. So we had a lot that we got, you know, that got us to where we are today through agriculture. And how, how come we just, you know, turn the blind eye to agriculture and say, because there's, a, there's an oil boom, yes, then that's all we're going to um, fixate our mind on. If we start to look at agriculture, if we're exporting food to other countries, then we're making money from that. Can we also talk about the insecurity that is happening, ravaging us in our country, that is obviously making farmers not go to farms? So if we can also, um, you know, try to curtail that, then obviously agriculture is going to thrive. But still talking about insecurity, another way to generate revenue is tourism. And having people come into Nigeria because they're coming here to spend money, if we're even hosting like a tournament or something, um, like the AFCON that was just being held in Cote d'Ivoire, why can't it be held in Nigeria? So if we have people who are coming into Nigeria spending their money, that's another way to generate revenue. So these are just some ways to generate revenue. Why do we always have to tax the poor? The vulnerable people, the little money that they have, we're still having conversations about the minimum wage, which nothing has really been done. Um, the federal government said they were going to increase it from 20, for, well, with about 25 to 35 percent, which is from about 30,000 naira to about 48,000 naira. And then it went up, and as of today, it stands at about 62,000 naira. However, some governors have said they cannot pay that fee, they cannot pay minimum wage of 60. 2,000 naira, some of them 60,000 naira, and we are still expecting to tax these same people that can barely feed, that can barely pay their rent, that can barely survive, because right now it is a living wage that we're even talking about, something that is sustainable for someone to be able to cater for his or her family. And so, yeah, we're still saying we want to tax these people. I think a tax exemption would be great. Um, you're seeing things that happened in Kenya, for instance, and they had like this whole finance bill and people took into the streets, tried to protest. After protesting, well, the government did a pushback. But as of today, he decided, the, 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 the Kenyan president decided that, okay, you know what? Since you guys are not going to pay this finance bill, since you guys are not going to pay these taxes, no problem, we're going to take it out. That is what I would expect. I think each government needs to understand its people and do things because your primary responsibility being in the government or being in any office is for the security and welfare of your people. So you always have to think about that. So tax exemption um, by Oye Dele, Tai Oye Dele, I think it's fantastic. I think it's something that the government can look at and it would even make the people love you more, trust you more, say yes, the government is listening to us. What is democracy if you're not listening to your people? What is democracy? So you need to listen to your people. You need to know where the, ch where the shoe pinches and try to ensure that you're doing something to make them more comfortable. You're doing something to cushion the effect of this economy that everybody is shouting right now that is dwindling. So if we start to put reforms in place for that, 
then why not? And when our heads, you know, is, is better, you know, because right now it seems like our head is, you know, under the water. So when our heads are better above the water, then you can start to say we need to increase the taxes. But if it's tax exemption for the poor, for the vulnerable, I think it is a fantastic idea. And I think the government should actually take that under advisement. All right. Another one says loot recovered under Buhari returns to owners. And that is being said by the ex-presidential aide. Okoye Obono Obla is a former um, chairman. Um, and then, you know, he has said the loot recovered under Buhari returned to owners. I don't know what that means, but OK. The former chairman of the special investigation panel for, um, you know, the, the ex-president has come out to say that, you know what, the recovery of public property alleges the loot recovered under former President Muhammad Buhari's administration was returned to looters. Speaking on a podcast, Obono Obla claimed his, his efforts to bring looters to justice were frustrated by officials in the same administration, including former Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubaka Malami. Obono Obla described Malami as an authoritarian and provided examples of recovered assets being returned to the original owners, including 80 brand new X-Class Mercedes-Benz cars from Ibrahim Tumsa, a former director of Power Works and Housing. He also mentioned a case involving a senator, later president of the Senate, found in the Panama Papers with over £200 million worth of property in offshore islands, which was not acted upon despite being reported to the president and attorney general. Obono Obla admitted that the Buhari administration failed to effectively fight corruption, especially after the removal of himself and former EFCC chairman Magu. He claimed Malami was behind many of his problems, making jest of his recovery efforts and contributing to his suspension, which has not been lifted to date. Mm. Corruption is a serious issue in Nigeria. And you see all of our politicians, the people who were meant to have the responsibility to ensure our security and welfare, most of them, I wouldn't say all, because you cannot put everybody in the same bandwagon, so I wouldn't say all of them, but a lot of them are just using taxpayers' money to enjoy themselves. They're spending frivolously with taxpayers' monies, and you hear of things like this. How do you have properties worth £200 million? Meanwhile, there are people in your constituencies that are suffering. There are people in the villages that you are from that have no schools, they have no primary health care center, they have nothing for themselves, but you are okay spending these people's money for yourself, like it was gifted to you, like Nigeria is just for you. Meanwhile, Nigeria is for everyone. We cannot start to, you know, look at taking government um, offices as a poverty alleviation scheme. No, that is not what you are there for. The moment you decide to serve, you are a leader. You are supposed to serve. You're supposed to listen to the people and make sure that their welfare is paramount when it comes to whatever you need to do. But taking these same people's money, taking it abroad, spending it on frivolous things, that is just, that is just uncalled for. That is, that is really a poverty mentality. And it, I think it's important that if you're, going to, if you're going to take any public position, if you're not ready for the job, if you cannot do the job, or if you cannot go there and not be corrupt, then you shouldn't take it at all. I mean, what, how is your conscience? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question for me. Like, how is your conscience? But talking about, you know, what um, you know, he's saying, Obla is saying that the Buhari administration failed to, um, you know, to be able to cut cop corruption and it's quite unfortunate because i know that when former president buhari came into power one of the mandates he had was we're going to fight corruption and if you're hearing that someone who works with him said there were so many people that were not able to um that the the president the president at the time wasn't able to fish out in fighting this corruption then that is quite sad and unfortunate and i hope that's not the same thing that is happening in this same administration now all of the funds that have been looted how do we even know if they've been returned or rather if they've been given to the Nigerian government and what they're using it for? If you're giving it back to the owners of the people that looted this fund, then you're just aiding them. You're, what you're doing is telling people that it's okay to steal from the people 
and nothing is going to be done. But when we have a proper justice system and we start to put checks and balances in place for these people and make sure that they serve time. So if you steal, you're going to jail. Look at China. Look at Taiwan. Look at Hong Kong. Look at what they do there. The moment they find out you are corrupt, most of the time you might not even leave to tell the story. Most of the time you're probably going to die by hanging or by lethal injection or something. They definitely would sentence you. Now, I would not su subscribe to that. But what I'm just saying is if you have to serve time, first you have to seize all of the assets, make sure that they serve time, and that will serve as a deterrent to other people that when they go there, they know that I might lose my family. I might lose my freedom. And so I don't want to go there and be corrupt. Corruption has eaten so deeply into our society that I don't know how we're going to come out of it. But it starts now. It starts today. It starts with the political will of our politicians to say, yes, we can stand for what is right. And we can make Nigeria that country that was once corrupt, but now incorruptible. But it only starts if they decide to. And I hope that one day we'll have a Nigeria that isn't corrupt. One of the things that, you know, people say outside the world, we have a bad PR because, you know, most people are like Nigerians are so corrupt and the Nigerian politicians are so corrupt. How about we change the narrative? How about we start to do what is right and ensuring that we have a good PR all over the world and they say Nigerians are honest people. Nigerian politicians have integrity. Nigerian politicians will make promises and they will do what they have said. That would be great. Let us, let us stop stealing. Let us stop aiding corruption. If you know people that are corrupt, please call them out, name and shame them, and ensure that they face the justice system. And we just have a better Nigeria for ourselves. All right, our final top trending story. This one says UK-based Nigerian continues, continues receiving Nigerian salary two years after relocation. A Nigerian civil servant referred to as Daniel relocated to the UK in 2022. Despite not showing up for work, Daniel continues to receive his monthly salary of 150,000 naira from his government job in Nigeria. Daniel, now a taxi driver in the UK, credits the arrangement to a mutual understanding with his boss, who is also a relative. President Bolatini was ordered a crackdown on Nigerian government workers leaving abroad while still drawing salaries, demanding they refund the money and that their supervisors be punished. Daniel kept his job to leave the door open for a potential return to Nigeria. Daniel remains unconcerned about the president's directive because his UK earnings surpass his Nigerian salary. The issue highlights the persistence of ghost workers in Nigeria's civil service. Efforts like the integration personnel and payroll information system have exposed and eliminated around 70,000 ghost workers, saving the government significant funds. Now, Ghost workers is something <laughs> that we've really spoken about here on this show. And um, I don't know why people would, you know, not show up for work. We, let's even leave the people in the diaspora for a minute. Now, there are people in Nigeria who have civil service jobs and they don't go to work. They don't show up. There is no report whatsoever. There is no appraisal. I'm wondering what the government is doing. Um, I mean, now they're doing something, but I mean, before now, what were they doing? Is there no HR? Is there nobody who is, you know, appraising whatever they've done, all of the inputs that they have made into the civil service? How do they still get paid? But of course, you know, corruption, like we said, you speak to your boss, you have an arrangement, maybe you grease his palms or her palms with some money, and then they ensure that those salaries are still flowing into your account. And I know that the president has spoken about this, saying they have to return the money. Now, I don't know how possible that is going to be, having to return the money. Some, of, some people might have even spent the money, but people who have moved abroad, if you have moved somewhere else, you cannot be getting money where you're not even showing up to work. I mean, face your job there. Try to ensure that you have a good future for yourself there. If you want to still get that money, then come back to Nigeria. I think it's still corruption for you to move abroad, get somewhere, get another job somewhere else, and you're still receiving salary from a place that you do not show up at. That is corruption. And if we really want to fight corruption, it's from little things like this. So I'm happy that the government has, you know, launched out this crackdown on people who have moved abroad. But it shouldn't just be to the people who have moved abroad. The people who are here as well, there are so many people that it's just their names and their account numbers that are on payrolls. That's all. 
they've never seen them they've never done any work we don't even know if they're capable of doing the jobs that you know they were given so it is important that we look at this civil service try to do an overhaul making sure that we're sieving out all of the weeds the people who are not there to actually work it's important that we do that. We're talking about, you know, um, the, the minimum wage. Of course, the government is going to cry out and say we do not have a lot of money to pay these workers because there are so many workers that are not, that are ghost workers. There are so many people that are not working. But if you start to take them out, of course, the funds that you have now will just probably be enough for the people who are actually working. And I hope that we can really fight this and I hope that the government is doing their best because, you know, saying it is one thing, but having to execute it is another. So I hope that they're really doing their best to ensure that they fight this, this system of corruption whereby you can move somewhere else or not even show up at work, but you're still getting money. No, a laborer is due his wages. So what does that mean? A laborer has to work and then you can get your wages. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us. <laughs>